and I'm going to open a public hearing on House Bill 3010. Uh, Mr. Olson, if you'll help us out with a brief summary. Thank you, Madam Chair. House Bill 3010 creates the Freedom to Choose My School grant program. It directs the Department of Education to select large school district to administer the grant program. It allows the eligible students to attend public or private school under the program. It directs district to pay grant funds to a school participating in the program, specifies the amount of grant, adds weighting to state school fund formula for students who participate in the program, and applies to the 2008-2009 school year. This bill has a subsequent referral to the Revenue Committee and then the Joint Ways and Means Committee. And Madam Chair, I believe we have uh, uh, a panel of uh, requesters of the bill, uh, Mr. Matt Wingard, uh, Jomo Greenridge, and uh, Marcus Mundy. We don't have Marcus here, so Esther Henson will be coming up. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much for your time and patience. <coughs> Madam Chair, uh, members of the committee, we first of all, we want to thank you very much for the opportunity to present this bill, which is the product of two years' worth of work uh, with um, um, members of the minority community in Portland. A number of them are here today. I hope we do get a chance for you to hear from all of them, so I'm going to keep my uh, remarks as brief as possible, uh, but I do want to uh, just address a few issues. I have uh, uh, turn in a copy of my testimony and some letters for some folks who couldn't be here today but wanted to make sure that they were heard on this bill. And then a copy of the report that we put out a year ago when we began meeting monthly with minority parents and community activists in, um, first of all, I should introduce myself. My name is Matt Winger. Thank you. I, I am the director of the School Choice Project for Cascade Policy Institute, which is a uh, nonprofit, nonpartisan policy research center based in Portland. Cascade works to advance individual liberty, economic opportunity, and personal responsibility. Now that I've done the part that I get paid to say, um, we began having a monthly meeting in the community to talk about uh, the educational situation in North Portland and Northeast Portland. And uh, in the course of some of the early meetings, it became clear that uh, the people in the room had a lot of history, and they had a lot of stories to tell, and they knew a lot about what had been going on over the last 30 years in the community and different attempts to reform the public system. And, but there was nothing brought together that was there was no resource there was no it had not been put together in a manner in a, in a report where everyone could access it so the first thing we set out to do was to put out this report which is on our website and has been widely distributed in the community in Portland many folks have read it and it's a 14 page report that essentially details uh, it starts from the point at which another report on the Jefferson cluster was put out in the mid 70s indicating at that time that there were unacceptably high dropout rates and unacceptably high a failure to read rates and unacceptably high failure to be able to do math at grade level rates and that something needed to be done. And what the report details is that in, over the course of 30 years, a lot of things were done, but it didn't make much difference in the dropout rates, in the failure to read rates, and in the failure to do math at uh, grade level rates. So uh, I would uh, encourage everyone in the committee to read the report. Members of the public who are watching, again, it can be accessed on our website. Uh, some of the, the, the uh, figures are in there, so I won't go over those, but in the, once uh, members of the community and, and our group had uh, read the report, and it, it reflected their memory of what had gone on and, and the level of the, of the dropout rate, which hovers around 50 percent in the area, uh, the question began, where do, we go, where do we go from here? And uh, so I'd just like to make a couple points, and then I'll conclude. One is that and again, I hope nobody takes this the wrong way on the committee, and we're very, very grateful uh, for the hearing today, Representative Com. But we just spent the last hour and a half talking about what much might be a very tiny problem, if it is a problem in this state, and that is whether or not people are homeschooling are, are doing a good job and whether or not private schools are doing a good job. And we're going to spend a much shorter for period time. of time talking about an extremely serious and large problem. I you're talking about a community where upwards of half of the folks are not graduating from high school. Now, I asked Matt Evans, who did this research project at the time, over the last 30 years, based on the attendance rates at Jefferson, what would you estimate are the number of children, who are now adults, who went through this system and either dropped out or left without actually being able to read and do math at the grade level that their diploma would have indicated that they could? 
His estimate was seven to 8,000 people. <coughs> Those people don't just disappear. You see them in the unemployment lines and in the welfare lines and everywhere else. When we fail, fail, fail to deliver an education that people really need and that they do want. So um, I'll end by saying that House Bill 3010 is a pilot project designed to answer the question, do low-income parents want to take control of their child's education? And do they want access to school choices outside of what they are being offered today? If the current system is meeting their needs, they will not sign up for this program. If they do sign up, then as policymakers, we must ask ourselves why, and the publicly funded education system must respond to their needs. After all, low-income parents have the most limited choices in today's education system. They cannot afford private school, even if they desire it, and they cannot afford to move into the neighborhoods with the best performing public schools. Being low-income should not limit your child's educational choices. One could argue that low-income parents are precisely the people who need the most varied uh, educational choices for their children. I've attached a fact sheet about 3010 that highlights the major aspects of the project. I hope you will give this program serious consideration and place the needs and desires of parents and students ahead of those expressed by the adults running the public education system. I hope that we can all agree that no one should be forced to attend a school that isn't meeting their needs just because they can't afford another option. House Bill 3010 is a starting point for a discussion about how to give low-income parents in Portland more control over their child's future. We stand ready to work with any legislator to craft a better pilot program and move this vital, it's affecting people every day, this vital piece of legislation forward. And I thank you for your consideration. Thank you.